So the more that we get past life's, um, what is that word? <laughs> Inequities. Okay. <laughs> the- <laughs> Shut up. You say that line, please. God. Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time and a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. Stay positive. Be optimistic. The glass is half full. The wealth versus the poor mindset. This concept is known by many phrases or names. We'll be referring to it as the growth mindset. In this episode of The Family Order, we're going to be digging a little bit deeper and begin comparing the growth mindset versus the victim or fixed mindset and why it's important to have a growth mindset lifestyle. So today we want to focus the discussion on something that has begun to make big changes in our personal life and we've seen it in others too most people have probably heard someone tell them at some point to stay positive when something bad happens you know life isn't always fair but what are you going to do about it so the victim mindset has become more pervasive all around us Uh, we've all noticed that people with the most success seem to have a different outlook or perspective on the world around them and especially when problems come up. We all have moments where we want to play the victim. A lot of people will say, why is this happening to me? Everything is against me. One of the resources that we've actually started implementing in our daughter's life and have found very helpful in our own life is the Big Life Journal. And not only for our daughter, but for us, it's, um, it has been a big help in helping us think about what we are teaching our kids about being better every day and how it leads to bigger and better results. So we are teaching her to strive for progress and not perfection. Another one of our favorite um, authors is Jordan Peterson. One of his quotes is, don't compare yourself to someone else's best self. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. And that is a part of our family mission statement, is continually improving ourselves every day, enriching the tribe around us. So this goes back to COVID and how it saved our family as well. And we really wanted to turn a negative into a positive, make the Mm -hmm. best out of a situation instead of sitting there and waiting for somebody else to fix it or it'll just go away. So we If you guys haven't realized, we would still be waiting. (laughs) Yeah, that would have been a long wait. A long wait. (laughs) So, you know, some other examples, just to throw these out there. So there are people out there, we probably all know different examples of this, but here are a few. So people get surprised every year by their taxes and they get angry when they wind up with this unexpected bill that just hits them out of nowhere and how unfair it is. Tax day is April 15th for those of you that don't know. Unless, I mean, this year, if you were one of the people that decided to to wait, I don't know what good it did, but. Yeah. So, so some other examples would be my wife or her husband is they're not doing what I want them to do. They don't help out enough. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're they're not they doing what I tell enough. them to do. They don't <laughs> So uh then you got the ones that think, Oh, so and so just has good genes and they're naturally skinny. They don't have to work out. They don't have to diet. <laughs> uh those people just got lucky. They're naturally talented. They they got the, the money, the job, the promotion, you know, all, all these types of things. We've had experience with this ourselves. Um, so we've had, you know, some lucky breaks and then other times not so lucky breaks where things have been hard on us and it's easy to look around at the people around you, especially now with social media, but you can see people that look like they're just having the best life 
They don't have any troubles. They breeze through college, got great grades. They've been healthy. They don't have family issues. They don't seem to have anything going on, which may not be the truth, but you look around and compare yourself and you're like, man, I, what am I doing wrong? You know, I don't seem to have all these things. I don't seem to be going on all these adventures. So we found our self struggling with this and the power of yet was very helpful in the big life journal and this is something we're working with with our kids is to say you're not good at this okay you're not good at this yet Mm -hmm. it's something you need to work towards there's a lot of hard work that goes into being talented and trying and failing is much better than just never trying because you're afraid of of failure failure is how you learn and i think we've lost that a little bit I, i know that a good example that i read about a lot as a kid was Michael Jordan. Everybody thinks he's just naturally good at basketball. And yes, he is tall and athletic. There are definitely some genetics at play, but I think people forget how much work he had to put into that over and over. And if you want to know, watch The Last Dance and you will be absolutely blown away by this guy and realize that it it was not all pure luck or no. who his dad was or you mm-hmm. know or anything like that Natural and some talent. of that some of that stuff can help mm-hmm. uh absolutely but i think there's many examples out there if you really go look them up there's a lot of folks that were successful that didn't just they didn't look into it mm-hmm. two examples you know um in our daily life um in pertaining to teaching this to our daughter who is eight um, is we had her come up with something of the power of yet. What is something that you don't know how to do yet that you want to? And what are the steps? And it wasn't anything groundbreaking. She said, I don't know how to juggle yet. And we're like, okay, well, let's do that. And she wrote out the steps and everything. But her doing that first on her own led to a greater discussion this past week when she was struggling with social studies Um, and we kind of figured, she said, I'm just not good at social studies. And I said, no, 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 no. We don't say that. We don't just say we're not good at something. We're not good at it yet. We've taught her, you haven't learned how to learn it yet. And we need to sit back and we need to think about how can we learn social studies better? How can we make it stick? You obviously do math very well and that sticks in your head. We need to learn how to do this and and case in point was it ended up being we need to take better notes and we're still working on we that we made flashcards too and flashcards yes yeah. but because she took something as simple as she doesn't know how to juggle yet <clears throat> and applied that same concept to something that is a little bit more important I guess <laughs> such as learning social studies <laughs> in school um, she was able to connect those dots so if kids are able to do it why can't adults yeah i don't know how to because they never learned how to do those things uh as a kid growing up they didn't learn how to you know find a better way instead of just complaining about it exactly and you know moving into adulthood you know the victim mentality does not help you improve Being a victim can become like a personality trait. Mm -hmm. Um, You allow yourself to constantly be a victim over and over again. And it makes you powerless because you never take responsibility to improve yourself. Um, So bad stuff happens. What are you going to do about it? Um, How are you going to change it? And that's the big, that's one of the big things is it's not can you change it? Yes, you can. That's like saying can you go to the bathroom? Right. It's how can you change it? The, the, the word being how. So budget for your taxes. Make sure that you have an appropriate amount being withheld from your paycheck. That is a simple calculator on the IRS website. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. Um, and if year after year you end up owing taxes, you're obviously not doing something correctly (laughs) and you need to find a professional to help you. Right. Um, If your spouse isn't doing what you want, 
So did you do something to cause that? Are you being the best version of your spa- of yourself for your spouse, um, for them to be the best version of themselves? Mm-hmm. Uh, some people are skinny, yes. Okay. Um, but that does not excuse the donuts and the pizza that you ate today. So rather than being jealous of so-and-so can eat whatever they want and not gain a pound, you know, see if there's more that you can do for yourself. Okay, obviously there's some science and some stuff behind that, but I, I, I'm sorry. If you're going to continue to look at yourself every day and and be upset and then, you know, go have a bad relationship of with food, get help. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a huge thing. Just don't, don't keep continuing to be in this in this rut. So some people do get lucky with money or job promotion, you know, but find a different way, get a different job, invest or, or budget the best that you can, you know, to make your, your ends meet. The more we get past life's inequities, the more we move into thinking about the action required to improving. And so you really do get out what you put in. I know that's that's a cheesy line we've heard for a long time. We have found it to be pretty useful in our lives, and we fought it. We fought it for quite a while ourselves. And, you know, when it comes to many things, money was a big one. Money has always been a big one that we had a bad relationship with money or a bad script running in our head about money growing up that people that had money – they took a shortcut. They cheated somebody. They did, they were, oh, they were just handed this by somebody else and they just had it good. Uh, because what that does is make you feel better about yourself because there's nothing wrong with you. You just had bad circumstances. So somebody that's doing better than you, they're not really better than you. They just had some lucky circumstance in their life that led to a greater success for them. So then you don't have to look in the mirror and actually think, okay, here's what I did to cause this. But the truth is that causes growth. You know, we've moved into this notion out there that you don't need to feel bad. Well, yeah, you do. You need to feel bad. You need to feel bad about your weight. You need to feel bad about your money. You need to feel bad about your job or your relationship with your spouse, your kids, or something else in your life. Because if you feel bad... That's the first step, but then you need to take that next step. Okay, I don't like this feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm failing. Now what am I going to do? Now I'm going to improve this. Okay, you set a goal, then you take the steps. You know, we're big on SMART goals, and I know SMART goals have really caught on out there, and they're painful to write sometimes. To Mm -hmm. sit down and have to write out, a goal so it's time bound, it's mm-hmm. actionable, measurable. Right. Mm-hmm. All those things like it's it's not how you naturally think. It's really hard to sit down and do that, especially if you're not a structured person. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does really help you improve and you get fast at it. You start learning how to do it a lot bit a lot quicker and you basically mm-hmm. start it just becomes like a cycle. And so we've found that just we catch ourselves doing it, mm-hmm. being the victim, and we get out of it quicker because we start recognizing it a lot sooner. And we'll call each other out on it, not in a rude way, because when somebody's angry, sometimes just let them be angry for a minute. It's okay. Being angry is just an emotion. It's an indicator on your dashboard that you need to check your engine. Okay, what's going on here? This is telling me something that I'm frustrated about. Now what am I going to do about it? And the action steps are sometimes something we fall short on in general. Just mm-hmm. uh, I know I do it quite a bit that something's got me frustrated. So, okay, now what's next? Instead, I could just sit here and get stuck in this cycle of complaining about it, not doing anything about it. Then I can complain about it again. And the sad truth is people like that tend to drag other people into it with them. Mm-hmm. Especially if they find somebody that likes to do it too, they, they just, they start feeding on each other. Yeah. And and you can do that very quickly and very easily. Sure. With spouses, coworkers that are around you. Are you a energy vampire at work? Like, are you 
projecting negativity, um, you know, because you are quote unquote so busy and have so much work to do. And, you know, we, we make a conscious effort to choose each day what we spend our time on because the things that we spend our time on each day are going to move the needle towards our SMART goals. So instead of spending time in a victim mentality, we are spending time in a growth mindset of making ourselves better each day. A couple of more examples, I guess, just because we have some time, you know, SMART goals. And it's not just one area of our lives that we have SMART goals in. I have SMART goals in my business, you know, that I have mapped out over the next month, two months, three months, you know, on on and so forth, one year, five years even. And we have SMART goals that we have mapped out for this podcast. We have no idea where it's going, but we've mapped some uh, some goals out, hoping to get it to a certain point a certain degree um, for our family. Uh, Additionally, you know, we map out goals when it comes to homeschooling. We want to be at Mm -hmm. this point by April, and then we're going to start fourth grade in May. We are constantly mapping out our lives. We're constantly mapping out our day. What do we want to accomplish today? What are the top five things that I'm going to do today to move the needle in my business, to move the needle in my marriage, to move the needle in my kids' lives? to move the needle in my health, you Mm -hmm. know, um, if you're not, if you're not touching those buckets each day, if we're not touching our four pillars each day, Mm -hmm. our marriage, our family, our health, and our home, we haven't had a very good day. If we're not touching each one of those, each one of those buckets every day, that's not a very good day for us. Yeah. And some days you do a lot more on one of those than the other but you can't do everything. You have to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. So one big thing we've tried to get better at, and we're not fully developed yet, is we really try to pick these high priorities and work on them before we move on to the next. Um, If you try to do too much, you wind up not getting anything really done of significance. Um, It's a lot of busy work. You're switching gears, bouncing back and forth, and you never really get the big things done especially if they're hard or tough they're unpleasant they're tedious Um, maybe your goal's too broad maybe it's too abstract maybe it's not specific enough Mm -hmm. Um, so that's something we've run into quite a bit Uh, we've set goals financially too would that goes further out and then we break it down into the quarterly the monthly the weekly maybe not daily but we we do have discussions about you know, what's coming up each day this week, what are some things we need to plan for, and we talk about those things. So we found that much more useful than just sort of hoping and praying that we at the end of the month, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's all good. So the call to order this week is to think about something in your life and write it down. What is something holding you back? Do you have your financial house in order? Is your health in order? Is it something with a relationship and a family member, friend, whatever? Uh, is it something at work? Uh, could it could be any one of those things. What is something that you're not taking responsibility for? Think about something that's getting in your way of achieving your goals, and it's something that you can change. You can impact this. Now, maybe you don't control the entire goal but it's something you can take action on and make a change even if it doesn't work out you know you did the best you could and you're better for it in the end anyway so with that i think that wraps it up for this episode of the family order podcast and we hope you enjoyed this we hope you take part that you participate in your own life and take action to improve yourself. If you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, all it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. 
Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on Facebook at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.